if you put b to the tip of a and put a to the tip of b, you form a certain parallel, uh, parallelogram, right? What's the area of that parallelogram? It's, it's a, b sine theta. So the cross product gives you, the magnitude of the cross product gives you the area of the parallelogram formed by a and b. Actually, in this case, it looks like a rhombus, right? Because I drew the a similar magnitude. Uh, let's say I draw a a little bigger. So one of the things that the parallelogram, uh, the cross product gives you is the area of the parallelogram. But that's not as important, OK? Um, the direction of the vector c, vector c is an actually a third vector, right? The direction of the vector c is given by the right hand rule. So let's practice the right hand rule now. a crossed into b, so you turn your fingers in the direction of b, and your thumb is the direction of the vector c. So the vector c is out of the board. And here's how we draw out of the board, OK? If a was like this and b was like that, and if the angle was more than 90, it still would be out of the board. A at cross into B out of the board. Okay? If the A had been like this and the B had been like this, then what would it be? A crossed into B, into the board. Now notice because B is down, instead of doing this way, I had to, it forces me to turn my right hand so that my palm is down. So it goes A cross into B into the board. Uh, so that's the vector C into the board. So the magnitude of vector C is given by A B sine theta. That's the magnitude of vector C. And the vector C is pointing into the board. So I brought this three vectors here. You see, the cross product is such a good tool because no matter what two vectors you start with, let's say this is A and B, okay? A, B, it's gonna give you a vector like this. So it'll give you a vector opposite to that, okay? So A crossed into B, vector C. But it always gives you a vector such that that vector is perpendicular to the plane made by the first two vectors. If this was A and that was B, A crossed into B, then vector C. If this is A and this is B, A cross into B, vector C. If that's A and that's B, A cross into B, vector C. So you can rotate this any which way, and the vector A and B form a plane, and vector C is always perpendicular to that plane. So what do I know about the dot product of vectors that are perpendicular? The dot product of this and this should give me what? Uh, zero, and the dot product of this and this should give me zero. Now in this case here, what you're seeing is three vectors that are all perpendicular, you see? So A, B is perpendicular, and C is perpendicular to both. But uh, it doesn't have to be. Uh, the A and B don't have to be perpendicular, you know? So A is B, B is this way. How about if A is this way? How about if B is this way? You, do, you tell me what's, where C, what C is. How about if A is out of the board, B is this way. Now A is out of the board, and B is down. How is C? OK. How about, you see, because this is the plane made by A and B, so C is down. How about A is this way, and B is this way. B is into the board, A is to the left. A crossed into B, because E is into the board, C is this way. 
You see? So I try to give you a bunch of variations of this. <coughs> Now, let's answer the question, why is torque defined as a cross product and not a dot product? Okay, we saw a minute ago why work is defined as a dot product. So why is torque defined as a cross product? So if I have some kind of a shape here, let's say a ruler, and I fix the, I fix the end here and I apply a certain force. Okay, at different angles. So here's my R, here's my F. Let's say I apply a force to the end of the ruler at different angles. Which one does it make more sense to define work as? The dot product of R and F or the cross product of R and F? Okay. If it had been the dot product, if the torque had been defined as the dot product of R and F, then first of all, it wouldn't have been a vector, so that's not good. Okay? But besides that issue, if it had been the, the dot product, it would have been RF cosine theta, right? Let me see. So what would that mean? Well, it would mean this force, the one that's perpendicular, see this, this middle one, what would be the torque due to that? So if I take a ruler and I just pull, push it down, if the torque had been defined as a dot product, what would the torque be? Zero, right? Cosine of 90 is zero. That means if you take something like this and you pull it down, it doesn't, nothing happens, it doesn't rotate. But does it rotate? Well, you can practice it. Take your arm, fix the end point, pull it down. Something happens, okay? <laughs> that's, that's as good as you can do, okay? So it, therefore, it can't be a dot product, you see? So that shoots that out the window. So the cross product makes much more sense. The magnitude of the torque is RF sine theta. Okay, what that tells you is the maximum, most maximum torque you can apply to an object is when the angle is what? The maximum is RF when the angle is what? 90. Because uh, sine of 90 is 1, right? So it's telling you the fastest way you can rotate something is if you apply a force perpendicular to the object, which is perfect. Yeah, you see, when you apply a perpendicular force, you apply the most torque. When you apply a zero angle, you apply no torque. You see? So the sine is a much better choice for the torque, and that's why that's one of the reasons why the torque is a cross product. Okay, so the next time then on Wednesday, I'll show you how to do the torque, how to do the determinant. We're gonna do three by three determinants and stuff like that, so we'll get more into this.